Today's apologists claim natural origins are statistically impossible. Many creationists slash intelligent design proponents try to use statistics to argue against the likelihood that the universe, life, and the diversity of species on Earth could have originated through natural events. They'll cite examples such as the supposed astronomical odds of natural forces finely tuning our universe to support life, or forming the proteins necessary for the development of the first life, or evolving life's complex anatomical features, and so on. They insist all these events can only be explained by a divine creator, God. But all of these statistical claims are based on false assumptions. For the fine-tuning claim, for example, only an infinitesimally small portion of the universe can support life as we know it. The rest is almost instantly lethal from extreme heat, cold, pressure, vacuum, radiation, etc. Our universe is far more finely tuned for creating black holes than it is for supporting life. Another major problem is that we have only our one universe to examine and nothing to compare it to. That means any statistical analysis is meaningless because it's impossible to determine statistical likelihood based on a single data point. The best one can say is that our particular universe is one possible outcome. Meanwhile, creationists don't even have a single credible data point to support the existence of their supernatural god. Furthermore, we have no idea what selective forces may influence the formation of universes and not knowing all the selective forces involved in a process can completely invalidate the analysis. To give you an example, if you fully shuffle a deck of cards and lay them out in a row, your chances of getting a specific order is statistically almost impossible. 1 in 10 to the 68th power, or 1 followed by 68 zeros, which is roughly equal to the number of atoms in our galaxy. But if you pick up only the cards that are not in the right order, shuffle them and place them back in the spaces where you picked them up, and then repeat the process multiple times, eventually you are guaranteed to get the desired order. The introduction of selective forces, in this case preserving only the desired results and recycling the wrong results, can change the success rate from essentially 0% to 100%. Those selective forces also factor into the creationist claim that the odds of proteins forming naturally are virtually impossible. That's because they assume a random chance jostling of the amino acids necessary to form a protein, ignoring any potential selective forces that would arrange them correctly. Their assumption is unrealistic, since we know that so much of physics, chemistry, and biology require selective forces. For example, without gravity, hydrogen atoms have a 0% chance of turning into helium. But with enough gravity to cause that hydrogen to coalesce into a star, there is a 100% chance the hydrogen will fuse into helium. Another example. If you fill a container with hydrogen and oxygen gas, there is no chance they will form water. Add enough heat or a spark, and there is a 100% chance you will get water. Yet another example? RNA is made up of nucleotides, but if you just mix a bunch of nucleotides together, the odds of getting RNA are virtually nil. However, drip those nucleotides on certain clays, and there is a 100% chance they will form RNA. All these processes require a catalyst of some sort, and it's highly likely that the first proteins also required a catalyst. We may not yet know what that was, but we have discovered that RNA can fold like proteins and may have served the same basic function until the catalyst for the more flexible and variable proteins evolved. Finally, there is the creationist claim that life is too complex to evolve new features. As an example, they claim that it is statistically impossible for the bacterial flagellum to evolve because if you remove any single component, the entire system would be useless, and thus evolution could not lead up to a functional system through a gradual series of useful adaptations. But then a bacterial syringe with almost all the components of a flagellum was discovered. That bacterial mechanism would likely require only a few minor evolutionary tweaks to result in a functional flagellum. 
Although we can't know for certain if a bacterial syringe was indeed the ancestor of bacterial flagella, it still stands as an excellent example of how a previously unknown pre-adaptation can change the statistical odds from essentially zero to highly likely. The lesson is that until you know the selective forces involved in the formation of an event, using any statistical analysis to declare that event impossible is meaningless. Furthermore, claiming that the results of such a flawed statistical analysis is justification for belief in an intelligent creator is nothing more than an argument from ignorance fallacy. It's like someone who is unaware of how stars work declaring it impossible for natural forces to form elements heavier than hydrogen, and thus concluding that the only logical explanation is that God did it. Well, not a single explanation discovered by science has ever turned out to be supernatural. And God has never turned out to be the scientific explanation for anything. Ever. <laughs>